The crisis that I am about to talk about vastly eclipses all other concerns. We're talking about the life support system of our planet. Now, how many people do you think are expected to die this century, according to top scientists, if we keep going with business as usual? Top scientists like James Hansen, James Lovelock. Uh, does anyone have an idea of what the current predictions are of the death toll that the climate crises will have um, on, the, on our planet this century? I think I heard two billion. Yeah, we are in the billions. James Lovelock warns that it's up to as high as 6.5 billion people. That's and, everybody, isn't it? Well, except that our population is expected to increase slightly, uh, but it's an extraordinary number of people in the billions of people that if we continue with business as usual, top scientists say will likely lose their lives because of this crisis through droughts, famines. This is not science fiction. These are top scientists, people like James Hansen, senior scientist with NASA, who are warning about this. So we need to make this the number one issue. Solving this crisis can also solve our economic problems. As you go through this journey through the Arctic, think about what is happening, the abrupt, alarming changes, and realize that these changes are now coming to the rest of the planet. The Arctic is being hammered by climate change. The problem is that what is we, we are just beginning to see now is just the tip of the iceberg of what we are expecting in coming years. Now this is looking back over our geological past over the last 600 million years, and as you can see, there is a large portion of the planet's history in which we have been way warmer than we are today. 10 degrees Celsius, upwards 15 degrees Celsius, warmer on average. Um, in some of these time periods, the, there were tropical conditions in the Arctic, and the rest of the planet was largely desert. You can see here the correlation of the, uh, as the carbon dioxide levels go down, temperatures go down, carbon dioxide levels go up, uh, temperatures go up. Well, when these carbon dioxide levels go down, that carbon doesn't just disappear. There's only so much carbon on our planet. It has been stored in the form of fossil fuels. And as we are burning that, we are now launching an upward trend that is extraordinarily alarming. It's not just a few degrees. It's the fact that we are triggering what scientists call positive feedbacks that are lurching our planet back towards that hot time period and the transition be very abrupt and difficult to stop. And that is why this is not just a few degrees warming that we should be concerned about the survival of the polar bear. We're talking a drastic change that we are unleashing. The record ice melt in the last two summers, this past summer, particularly the summer of 2007, was such a wake-up call to scientists who had already been alarmed on this issue. They now say that it is very clear we are in abrupt climate change. This is one of the positive feedbacks that is lurching our planet towards a warmer state that much of the life on our planet, uh, many of the species of our planet cannot survive. Now, does anyone know what percentage of the species on our planet today are expected to go extinct this century if we keep with business as usual? Is it 30? 30? It's higher than that, I'm afraid. But any other guess, any other ideas uh, people have heard? It's above 60%. Some scientists warning as high as 80. 60% is now on the low end. This is if we continue with business as usual. And that is the number of species on our planet that will probably be extinct. And so we have got to make this the number one issue. We do not understand the complexities of life well enough to know that some of those species might be very critical to the survival of our own. This here shows the record ice melt that was seen 2007, very similar this past summer. It was such a difference, and this was already a reduced ice melt here, to the, that uh, it just was incredibly alarming to scientists because the positive feedback here is that during the 24 hour sunlight, when it hits snow and ice, it's reflecting 80 to 90 percent of that sun's energy. When it hits open water, it absorbs 80 to 90 percent of that energy. So it is causing a warming. <coughs> Trend, and there are many of these. Think about the positive feedbacks 
as we go through this presentation and you understand how alarming the crisis is. This isn't just the Arctic, as we've seen with uh, Hurricane Katrina and New Orleans shown here, that the effects are global and we have got to make this our key issue. Now, many people mistakenly think of the Arctic as a barren wasteland. This could not be further from the truth. The Arctic is full of life, but that life is dependent upon the pack ice. The seal use it both as a platform and their basic food source all comes from the ice. That is a harp seal, this is a bearded seal, these are endangered bowhead whale. The phytoplankton lives on the bottom of the pack ice and as the ice retreats, it seeds the great Arctic Ocean, feeding life that feed the entire biotic community from the all-white beluga whale, the bowhead whale, the narwhal whale with the unicorn-like horn, orcas, there's krill that sink and feed clams that feed walrus, and a polar bear, arctic fox, they're all dependent upon the pack ice. But as the pack ice retreats, we are losing that critical habitat and also the food source. Then the pack ice has already reduced in thickness by 48% in the last 35 years, and in a very alarming increase. Scientists three years ago said that we could see an ice-free Arctic Ocean as early as 2080. Two years ago, they warned it could be as early as 2040. After the 2007 ice melt, now scientists warn we could see an ice-free Arctic Ocean in the summer as early as 2012, just a few years away very alarming implications that that would cause. In my first journey of four through the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, I began at Prudhoe Bay, the northern terminal of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. This was in 1991. I was between my sophomore and junior years of college and had saved up money as a paper board for eight and a half years to go to college. And I got a full scholarship, was, was able to use the money I saved for college to go up to the Arctic but it was still a very low budget expedition. One food drop would have cost more than the entire <coughs> expedition. And so I had to bring a raft to get across the rivers and I only had about 10 days of food for the 90 day trip. I had my fishing equipment and it was depending on fish for the bulk of my diet, as well as roots and berries and greens. I had a, a massive backpack and this is eating lunch in the Sagamonirchuk River with a very horrific air pollution that exceeds that of Washington, D.C., and barrels strewn for scores of miles. There's more than 550 oil spills a year around Trudeau Bay. It's increasing as the infrastructure corrodes. There's more than 40 toxic substances spewed throughout the drill fields. And when you see the scale of it, you understand how we actually can change the planet with the scale that we are taking the fossil fuels that have been buried for hundreds of millions of years and pumping that carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, creating a perfect storm for a climate crisis. This is a, in the Trans-Alaska Pipeline where a drunk hunter shot a hole through the pipeline in 2001. And I was trying to get as far away as I could from oil development to try to find clean water to drink and fish to eat. This area is a giant wetland, as you certainly notice when you're hiking through it. That's because this area is underlaid with permafrost. They used to call that permanently frozen ground, and that, that frozen ground holds that moisture up in the top layer, creating some of the largest wetlands in the world. But that permafrost is melting, and with that, we're losing the wetlands. Now, I have horrific blisters from backpacking through the wetlands. The wetlands are why this area is just to the east of this area are the destination of 160 species of birds from six continents in all 50 states that go up to breed there. Does anyone know the other positive feedback? There are many positive feedbacks, but the positive feedback that is being caused by the melting permafrost. Methane. As the permafrost melts, the wetlands are drying out, and we are beginning to release that carbon, uh, more than a teraton of carbon, more than all the fossil fuels we've burned thus far. And unfortunately, as that carbon is released under lakes or under wetlands, it forms methane, which is 23 times more potent than carbon dioxide, uh, creating another massive positive feedback. In addition to all the fossil fuels we're pumping out, 
and the other impacts like deforestation and livestock, which is a significant impact on climate change. 